Capacitors and batteries are frequently compared because both are energy storage devices. However, there are fundamental differences among them, as we will see. Both capacitors and batteries have a positive and a negative terminal that provide a potential difference or voltage. If we connect a load, for example a lamp, an electric current will flow, but this is where the similarities end. First of all, batteries store much more energy than capacitors. Let's compare a 1.5V AAA alkaline battery with a 4700 microfarad capacitor charged at 1.5V. These two are approximately of the same size. While the battery can store a total energy of approximately 5000 joules, the capacitor can store a total energy of 5 millijoules. That is, the battery stores 1 million times more energy than the capacitor. Another important difference between batteries and capacitors is the way in which the voltage changes with time. If we make a plot of voltage versus time, for example, for a fresh AA battery that has been never used, the initial voltage is around 1.65 volts. When we start using the battery, this voltage will quickly drop to the nominal voltage of 1.5 volts, and this value will stay approximately constant throughout the life of the battery. When the battery is depleted, this voltage will quickly drop until the battery is not not longer useful. In a capacitor, if we make the same kind of plot, voltage versus time, and the capacitor is charged to the same 1.5 volts, when we start using the energy in the capacitor, this voltage will drop continually in time. Therefore, we do not have a range of constant voltage in a capacitor, as in the case of the battery. We have this range of time when we have approximately the same voltage coming from the battery. Another difference is the maximum current output. Batteries and capacitors are non-ideal devices. They have an internal resistance that limits the maximum current that they can deliver. A AA alkaline battery has an internal resistance of around 0.15 ohms. Since current equals voltage divided by resistance, the short circuit current of the battery will be 10 amperes. On the other side, capacitors have a much lower internal resistance. A 4700 electrolytic capacitor has an internal resistance of only 25 milliohms. This means that they can deliver a current of up to 60 amps. Of course, these 60 amps will circulate only for a very short time, much less than a second. In the following experiment, we will see the effects produced by the high currents that capacitors can deliver. Here we have a 600 volt 1900 microfarad capacitor. I am going to charge it to approximately 250 volts. After charging, now I am going to take a piece of aluminum foil and short circuit the capacitor with the foil. And let's see what happens. Muy bien. Several hundred amps circulate through the foil. As we can see, we have two holes in the aluminum foil. The material has been vaporized by the extremely high current produced by the capacitor. A recent development are supercapacitors or ultracapacitors. They can store much more energy than normal capacitors, and they will be the subject of a future video.